So as I near my uh, end date for my employment here at the Federal Express, um, there's a few things I've been thinking about. Here's my puppy friend. Hi! Oh, what are you doing? Hi, let me back up, okay? Now oh, there's my other puppy friend. Oh, I'm so excited! Okay, hold on. Hold on. That was a nice message uh, the kids left for me. Uh, the sidewalk chalk, it was like during the pandemic, it was like two years ago, that's why it's faded, you know. Um, the messages have faded, you know. It's back to the grind. The hospitals have emptied out of COVID patients, yes. But the orders, uh, the number of orders um, for delivery I have not, okay. So people have gotten used to that ordering convenience and now they are continuing that so there was no real let up then they started taking away the holidays They're like no fourth of july you're working fourth you know memorial day you're working all the family days you know i think they left christmas maybe new year's day maybe i don't know probably not but um you know how embarrassing it is when you're delivering uh you know a box of toilet paper uh, to folks on easter sunday while they're having an Easter egg hunt in their uh, front yard. It's a little weird, but that's what, you know, I mean, and and the people themselves say, hey, you know, oh, you didn't have to come today. I don't, you know, I'm like, I, you know, I, I had to, they, you know, that's what they, they want. Everybody, they double down, but there was no kind of like, yay, thank you. Thank you for your, you know, doing that. And a lot of customers were very thankful and I'll miss that. Uh, but that sort of faded away now. And people are back to wanting concierge service. You know, I want my package here, not here. So I'm getting a lot of that. And one of the reasons why, when I was talking to the, briefly to one of the UPS drivers, and he's about my age, he's 51, and we were talking, and I was like, who's gonna do this when we leave, you know? There's not a whole lot of, there's not a big crop of people coming up, you know, wanting to do this. There are a few hardworking folks who want to go and, and do this kind of work, and that's great. But, you know, it's just not, I don't think the numbers are there compared to the numbers of, you know, the demand for, for deliveries. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And I, and I figured it out. One of the things I've been thinking about a lot is that there's been a devaluation of workers, and, you know, this sort of like, uh, you know, well, he, he's just like, you know, there's a real push in this country for everyone to be an entrepreneur. Uh, everybody wants to be the CEO of the latest, greatest invisible thing that does nothing. But they make billions on it, you know, like kind of like the, um, I, I always think about that is it uh, the Fry Island Festival, you know, where it was like, oh, we're going to have this great big festival, and it's going to be all, all this, and then nobody did anything. Nobody did the details, so it fell apart because nobody wanted to do any of that. They wanted to do the big, you know, they wanted all the glory and all the, the fame and, about it. Um, the same with Elizabeth Holmes, uh, who's, by the way, free and having fun and selling her mansion and having, you know, with her new baby and out, you know, it's, it's like you defraud people of a lot of money, you get away with it. You, you know, steal $40 worth of uh, meat at the supermarket and you go to jail for a long time. Um, the, the thing about being a thief is that you make sure you go big or go home. So I was thinking about the devaluation of workers. Um, right now, there are a lot of workers who are organizing in unions and, and they've, you know, they've had it. The thing is, is when you devalue the workers, when you have a Kardashian-like um, lifestyle that's promoted that makes people who do nothing and have everything be the goal, then uh, you also devalue the work. And therefore, the work doesn't get done because nobody's there to do it because nobody wants to do it anymore everybody wants to be a superstar workers you devalued workers you put them down I'll tell you a story my wife 
If this happened to me, you'd read about it in the papers because it'd be freaking, it'd be a big, big issue, I tell you. My wife had worked uh, for in hospitality for a resort in the laundry, and she uh, did it for quite a while. We had a family member in the business and whatever. And uh, she was by the pool, uh, putting the towels in the little towel area. I don't know. Fancy, you know, high thread count towels, I guess. And um, a woman looked at her and looked at her child and said, make sure you study hard so you don't end up like her. And she bit her lip and walked away. I tell you, I would not be that nice. But this is the common theme, is that workers are pieces of shit, okay? Um, there is this devaluation, like I said, of the workers, and what happens is that um, you have devaluation of work, and then nobody does the work, and then all the people are like, they're shorthanded, uh, why, where's the people, they're so lazy. And then those people left doing the work get called lazy, which is absolutely asinine. The folks that are, are left holding the bag, like the, the guys who, uh, we had 14 walkouts out of 40 people, 14 people didn't show up one day, and some of them just never came back um, at, uh, at my facility there. And the people left had to hustle and do extra, 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 and they ended up being mad at the people that didn't show up. But that's called a toxic work environment. You know, when it happens all the time, it's not like a few bad apples, it's like the whole place is fucking rotten. So it's the Kardashian effect, I'll call it. The Kardashian effect where people see folks doing absolutely nothing and they have absolutely everything. No. Right now we're so busy, I'm dropping it and going. We basically, like someone orders a barbecue grill that weighs 125 pounds, what do I do? I push it off the truck gently and I put it in the driveway. And what do they do? They call up and complain. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? I didn't break it. It's in the driveway. It's going to be adjacent to the driveway. I'm assuming you're going to set it up there, not inside the house. I don't recommend that. That's how people die. But they still find room to complain now. It used to, you know, be thank you. Now it's, you know, hey, that's not, I want it now. Yeah. No, sorry. We're just as busy as we were before, even busier sometimes. And, you know, uh, the, you know, it's the new normal, okay? And the new normal is also here. New normal is we're busy. We cannot place your packages in specific areas. Sometimes on the scanner there, it'll be like, please place the package, you know, in the back underneath. It. And I'm like, no. Really? Because I was going to just throw it in the woods, so I don't know. I mean, what do you want? Another thing is, is that a lot of times when the truck is in the shop, you know, my truck has problems, we have to take and use a budget truck. Okay, budget or uh, enterprise or whatever. You'll see a rental truck, and, um, and I'll be in it. And then they'll be like, what? what's this, you know? Um, I remember I was driving a budget truck through a little camp neighborhood, fancy uh, lake, you know, area, private neighborhood. And a woman stopped me and she says, uh, excuse me, this is a private neighborhood. And I said, uh, don't worry, I won't tell anybody. 